I've just used one of my bank cards to withdraw some money from an ATM at SEB here in Clypeda. And I thought I'd share the experience with you because I think a lot of the time when people are looking into security, traveling abroad, we'll encounter some individuals who will give advice in videos about the current state of play where they've been in Europe and try to do such transactions. There are some machines which perhaps aren't as transparent, but at the SEB ATMs here, what they do do is provide a full page of explanatory details with figures. And it's quite clear, so long as you take the trouble to read it, that there is an exchange rate markup of 9.5%. Yeah, you heard me correctly, 9.5%. So here we use the euros. If you are withdrawing money from a US dollar account, for example, or from a Canadian or Australian dollar account, or from a Japanese yen account, always make sure that you choose the option of making the withdrawal in euros and therefore not accepting the exchange rate on offer which will make it a withdrawal in your local currency because 9.5% add-on plus whatever your bank might be charging you for making a withdrawal overseas. That's a hefty amount of money to lose, I think, for any of us. I wasn't withdrawing a huge amount of cash, obviously but there are some establishments which only take cash. Therefore, there comes a time when, loath as I am to do it, I have to take the risk putting my bank card into an ATM and hoping that it doesn't get eaten. Because yes, it's happened to me before in the deep south. That's right, southern Poland. And when that card got eaten and I went into the bank and said, the Polish branch, the Polish bank, and said, excuse me, my card's just been eaten. My UK bank card has just been eaten by your ATM. Here, let me show you my passport. I can therefore prove that the card belongs to me and the person working in the bank had to comply with banking rules which meant yeah even though it was obvious that i was the owner of the bank card they they were compelled to cut the card up in front of me they didn't have to do it in front of me but i was standing there they retrieved the card from the machine and could see, yeah, the names, all three names match. The bank, yeah, it looks right. Yeah, there's your part. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, it's probably your bank card, but it's been reported as stolen. Absolute nonsense. And so my bank card got cut up with scissors and I was left stranded over Easter. Luckily, a receptionist at the hostel where I was staying, which was closing down, by the way, because when I tried to tell them the story, which sounded highly implausible, admittedly, it sounded like a scam, didn't it? Sort of thing that certain backpackers would do. Oh, my bank card's been eaten. Can I pay later? Can I stay the whole of the Easter bank holiday weekend and maybe a week or so longer until I get my new bank card sent from the UK? Huh. But straight away, the receptionist said, the hostel's closing for the Easter bank holidays. And as my mouth dropped open, oh bugger, what am I going to do now then? She very kindly said, why don't you come and stay with my family in a little village in the mountains? And I wouldn't normally feel comfortable accepting such generosity from people, but 
when you're desperate. So I am eternally grateful to that young lady. And it was quite an experience going up and living for a few days in a tiny village. Konyakuf was the name of the village, famous for lace making and also for German men going and hunting for Polish traditional wives. Hmm, allegedly. I'm also grateful for my friend Nick the Australian, who was, I think he was in Gdansk at the time, up in the far north of Poland, and came down and further rescued me as my bank card was delayed in being replaced. I was very grateful for his generosity in helping me out for the next week or so. Went on a little southern Poland road trip, which I might tell you about more when it seems more appropriate.